new videos every day. Okay, so I am John Breeding. It is July the 12th in Austin, Texas. I want to speak about a book called Anatomy of an Epidemic by Robert Whitaker. He also wrote Mad in America several years back about the history with antipsychotic drugs. In this one, which is subtitled Magic Bullets, Psychiatric Drugs, and the Astonishing Rise of Mental Illness in America. Robert Whittaker, an investigative journalist from the Boston area, has written an incredible book and done an incredible service. Many of you have seen it already. It's getting some press, which is nice. Those of you who haven't, I really, really want to encourage you to get it as a resource and to share it as a resource because it's one really thorough, comprehensive source to look at the reality of what's happening with psychiatric drugs today. Of course, the current story, which is a public relations success story for the industry, for the psychopharmaceutical government industry, is that of biological psychiatry, you know, which is that problems in living are due to mental illness, right? And that mental illness is biologically or genetically based. The chemical imbalance theory, the bad gene theory. Therefore, drug treatment, with the treatment of next resort being electroshock. Very, very simple. The catch is that this is presented as science. And as I've said before, quoting Josh Billings, the problem is not that people don't know anything, it's that they know so many things that ain't so. In this case, everybody knows because of the PR blitz of the corporate, pharmaceutical, psychiatric, government, press, media complex, that these things are true about biological psychiatry. And that, what else? They're true because of the advancement of science. That's the story. A greater understanding of mental illness, a more reliable and accurate and thorough way to diagnose this illness, which is a brain disease. And the scientific discovery and validation of pharmacological treatments for these mental illnesses. That's the story. That's the PR line over and over and over again of psychiatry, taught in the medical schools, hammered in the journals, hammered in the conferences, hammered in the media over and over and over again. That's the story. The true story, however, Whitaker lays out really, really good because he took the time and energy and has the intellectual power and the writing prowess to really lay it out, what the real science shows. The real science shows. To start with, the drugs were mostly discovered due to side effects in the search for magic bullets in, magic bullets in physical medicine. You're testing a drug or something or something to treat some bodily problem, and you discover an unexpected side effect, which is identified as probably neurotoxic. But it's also seen as something that may be desirable from the point of view of altering psychiatric symptomatology. That's then adopted by the pharmaceutical companies to develop as a psychiatric drug. For example, Thorazine, the very, very first one, right? They were testing chemical dyes, looking at chemical dyes. They discovered that as a side effect that some of them had antihistamine, antihistamine properties. They thought maybe that would be good potentially for helping with surgery since it would stem the antihistamine reaction that people get to surgery or the histaminic reaction that people get to surgery. And so doing, they discovered that it also had an anesthetic effect. They called it hibernation. They called it a veritable medicinal lobotomy. And then came Thorazine, which was the magic pill to deal with this shame of the states, as Albert Deuce wrote, wrote about, which were the backwards of all these horrible mental hospitals across the country in the mid-20th century. 
sold by PR and marketing. The real science is that every category, whether it's the antipsychotics, the benzodiazepines, the antidepressants, the stimulants, you name them, and that's what's nice about Whitaker's book, he's laid them out. Every category holds these three things to be demonstrated. One, when you actually look at the data, they rarely ever even beat a placebo, even in the short term. The drug companies in the industry manages to twist or corrupt or buy or hide the unwanted data in a way that makes it good enough for the FDA to approve, and then the distribution and marketing thing starts, right? But the reality is they rarely ever beat a placebo, even in the short term. And in the long term, guess what? They're always worse than the natural course of whatever the problem is. As Whitaker laid out in Mad in America and lays it out again in Anatomy of an Epidemic, with the antipsychotics for the so-called horrid scourge of schizophrenia, they always fare way worse than allowing people to go through their experience without drugs. Historically and currently still in places where they don't rely on the drugs, you have a natural recovery rate over time with so-called schizophrenia that's pretty high. You know, 60% maybe, you know, sometimes higher long-term, right? But once you start on the drugs, you virtually guarantee an impossibility of recovery, and I'm going to explain why. With depression, the antidepressants turn out to be depressogenic. The stimulants cause all kinds of problems. Both antidepressants and stimulants tend to create bipolar symptomatology. The benzodiazepines create anxiety and panic. This is not the story that the public hears. How does it work? It seems that the brain adapts. You put a chemical in there that's said to target a specific molecule in the brain, a neurotransmitter thing, right? And then so you alter that dynamic, and what happens? The brain adapts. You put in an antipsychotic. It's supposed to alter the dopamine dynamic, right? And so what happens? The brain adapts, and you end up with a supersensitivity psychosis, they call about. You know, the dopamine receptors are altered such that when you withdraw the drug, you end up with a supersensitivity and you actually create psychosis. With the benzodiazepines, it's, it's GABA is the molecule. But the result is that you create a, a spiral of anxiety and panic. With antidepressants, so serotonin drugs, right? It actually alters the output of serotonin. The brain reduces output in compensation for the increased temporary presence of serotonin in the brain due to the chemical, and the receptor sites actually diminish. You try to come off the drug, and you crash and spiral. Or even on the drug, you often get manic, and that's where the bipolar thing in, comes in, and then the whole pharmacology a polypharmic thing happens, right? Same thing with the stimulants, all kinds of problems. You get an adaptogenic, you get a psychopharmaceutical induced disease. Peter Bregan called it medication madness. It's disabling the brain, creating a real brain disease where one did not exist before, which then makes it very, very difficult or virtually impossible to recover. The drug withdrawal is often very, 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 very difficult, especially the longer you take it because the brain literally changes. Impairment emotionally, of course, that's desired initially. You suppress fear. <laughs> you suppress grief. You stimulate against 
felt grief or depression, right? You know, so you have emotional dysfunction. Mentally, you tend to erode cognitive function over and over again. It's seen brain disablement in terms of learning ability and mental acuity for performing of tasks. Socially, it tends to impair either towards isolation or insensitivity and lack of empathy in relationships. And physically, bottom line, people die 15 to 25 years younger as a result of long-term psychiatric drug use. That's why one lawyer friend of mine calls it a pharma cost, death and destruction. And what Whitaker has really laid out is the disability data. You had a whole host of problems like depression and emotional upsets and things like that, and fear and anxiety, that people lived with and got through pretty naturally. For example, with depression, the natural course was usually a few months, right? Now you have permanent, lifelong mental illness leading to high, high rates of disability. Maybe one in 500 around the advent of the first psychiatric drug in 1950. One in 500, roughly, adult Americans considered disabled by virtue of mental illness. Now it's approaching closer to one in 50 on, psych, on disability, on SSI or SSDI. It's unbelievable numbers, millions and millions of people. Every day, in 2007, he presents the data, every day 850 new adults are added to the disability roles in this country. That's an auditorium, 850 people a day. Psychiatric disabilities we're talking about. What's even more tragic is every day 250 children are added to the disability roles. Every day. Psychiatry went through, in the pharma, as, as the proxy for the pharmaceutical industry, a marketing from getting these drugs to more and more adults, expanding that market for more and more illnesses, moving down to young adults, where you have now as many as 1 in 15, right? And then... You go on down until we well, now it's teenagers and then school age children, preschoolers, toddlers. And of course, he doesn't talk about the Mother's Act, but with that, you're going into pregnant mothers and babies. But more and more and more children with epidemics of bipolar disorder and stuff like that, which are mostly created by either the expanding of the diagnosis or the symptoms created by giving stimulants and antidepressants that create a cycling dynamic virtually every day with the drug effect. Anatomy of an epidemic. The industry continues to tout that it's scientific and that it's what people need. The reality in the natural progression of life in these types of distresses, in the actual studies on the drugs, shows that they're not effective. The actual studies on the drugs show they do all these damage. The actual studies on outcomes show that they are consistently way worse for every class of drugs, antipsychotics, benzodiazepines, antidepressants, and stimulants. That's the reality. Read this book, share it, and don't be silent. Make a noise when this subject comes up. At least say something. At least present the data that you know this is propaganda. The reality is these drugs are extremely dangerous. The longer you take them, the less likely you will ever recover. The disability rolls are going up, 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 up. Maybe you'll stop a few people. Maybe you'll save a few lives. Thank you. Seemed a little more passionate. If you liked this video, we have hundreds of more alternative videos ranging from sexual health to psychology to mind control. So if you liked it, go ahead and click on me 
to enter the Psyche Truth channel.